Welcome to Money Making Conversations. It's the show that shares the secrets of success experienced firsthand by marketing and branding expert Rashawn McDonald. I will know. He's given me advice on many occasions, and in case you didn't notice, I'm not broke. You know he'll be interviewing celebrity CEOs, entrepreneurs, and industry decision makers. It's what he likes to do. It's what he likes to share. Now it's time to hear from my man, Rashawn McDonald. Money Making Conversations. Here we go. Yes, this is Rashawn McDonald, and you are listening to Money Making Conversation. It's my podcast. It's my talk show. It's my radio show. It's about entrepreneurship, and it's about entertainment. Listen up. I provide the consumer and business owner access to celebrities, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and what they call industry decision makers. They, in turn, my guests, deliver information to the listeners, to the viewers, about career planning, motivation, financial literacy, and how to lead a balanced life. I finally got on the show, y'all. I, it's been a hunt. It's been a 10-month hunt, but I finally got my next guest on the show. She is an American comedian. That's what the—I I went to Wikipedia. That's what they said, American comedian. That's how you know you're in Wikipedia. You know you got a Wikipedia intro when you say American comedian. Actress, disc jockey, recording artist, producer, writer, writer and radio personality. Her career is on fire. If I've been trying to get her since January, her career is on fire. You may recognize her as the character Tiffany from the popular HBO series Insecure or her HBO stand-up special I Be Knowing or as the host of NBC stand-up comedy show competition Bring the Funny. She is on the show today to talk about her new book, Small Doses. Got it in my hand right now. Potent Truths, Everyday Use. The book engages, empowers, and enlightens readers on how to find their truths while while still finding the funny. Please welcome to Money Making Conversations, Amanda Seals. Hi. Thanks for having me. Well, first of all, what you're not going to do to me, Amanda, is with that little, that little low-key person. Now, I've read this book. I've seen you on stage. Got to bring the fire on my I've show. Been, I've been up since 5 oh, a.m. Oh, it's the up. It's the up story. It's been the up story. Now, let's talk about this I book. I have already shot an entire TV show. Oh, good. good. That means, that means you, you're earning your money. And now we're going to promote. Now this book, I'm going to just tell you, first of all, out of the blue, let me just talk about how you came into my life, okay? And, okay. And um, I always kind of knew about you. People have told me. I, I keep my hand, my tentacles out there about who's funny. But I'm always searching for the, the funny female that has a story to talk. And so I'm sitting at the house just going through, scanning through, and then, and I'm just scanning. I always go to 501 on DirecTV. 501 is HBO. For some reason, I always go to 501. So on this night, 501, boom, I see a young lady on stage. She has these little interesting clothes she has on, like little striped lines going up and down, and, you know, and she's on, she has her hair pulled back, and, and she has a crowd, and, and she's they, they're, they're laughing, they're funny. And he was like, I, I go, okay, let me stick around and just listen to what she has to say. Dynamic. Uh, I would, she, does, she, she, she does jokes I would never even think of doing. That's always a, a testament that you're, that you're doing something uniquely funny and you're gifted. She, she was doing humor that, first of all, it was female humor, so I would never do some of her jokes were female-driven. But again, the direction of thought, I would never do it. And so I started trying to get her on my show, Money Making Conversations. So then Jesse Collins came onto my show. He was promoting American Soul. Okay. During the middle of his interview, okay. I brought up your name. Okay. And then because at the end of the show, Jesse Collins' names pops up. Okay. So I knew he had to connect with her. So I said, Jesse, I got to get on my show. Okay, Rashawn. Okay, Rashawn. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. So I'm still on the search to get Amanda Seals on my show. Then all, then all of a sudden, the, the NBC competition show come out. I got people that know me in NBC Uni. You know, I'm a baller. I got people at NBC Uni. I call Come over in. there. I, I need to get Amanda Seal. Oh, Rashawn, we got you covered. Nothing. No. Finally, her book come out. I said, look, y'all. Amanda <laughs> Seals has a book coming out called Small Doses, Potent Truths for Everyday Use. Y'all, I'm firing people now. I'm firing people now if I don't get Amanda on my show. Guess what? If I knew I had to threaten them like that way back in January, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now, Amanda. Welcome to Money Making Shummers. Welcome to Money Making Conversation, and I'm your host, Rashawn McDonald. And how are you doing today, Miss Overwork, Miss On Fire, Miss Funny? How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you, Rashawn. I'm glad we finally made this happen. I didn't realize there was 
such a journey. But I, I, I mean, your persistence is. I just, I really am flattered by it. So thank you. Well, the thing about it is that it, it, it's when you see something special and you see something unique and you see something groundbreaking, that, all those terms are, are associated with you. Let's talk about your whole perspective on stand up. How did you get into being a stand up comic? Um, in 2013, I found myself at a crossroads. And I talk about this in the book. Um, yes, you do where I really had, like, I've been the MTV VJ. I'd been a pretty well-known spoken word poet. I had been hosting uh, different shows and doing radio. And so I had a lot under my belt in terms of just different trajectories. Mm -hmm. And it kind of had gotten confusing for people where folks just didn't know how to classify me. Right. And, you know, we just live in, we live in a world where people want to be able to, like, fit you in a, specific, a particular space. And so it was like I, I felt that people were essentially considering me as somebody who does a lot, which kind of ends up translating to, like, you do nothing. Right. And that was really problematic for me, and it just felt like I wasn't doing the best uh, economically with my time or my money right. in, the, in continuing to go in that direction. And so I started to consider, like, okay, well, what is the career that I want? You know, like if, I, if, if, if people can't find the label for me, who do I feel like is similar to me in terms of their practice and in terms of their product? And what is the label that they have? Mm -hmm. And so when I started looking at folks, um, the people that really rang true for me were people like Chris Rock, Chelsea Handler, Ellen DeGeneres, simply because, not because we share the same voice, but because, they had managed to create multimedia moguldom based on their unique points of view. Right. It wasn't necessarily based on them being producers or them being writers or them being directors. No, it was specifically based on first their point of view and then branching out to do all of those things from that cool. perspective. Right. And when I looked at all the things that they were doing, writing, hosting, acting, the one thing they all could do that I couldn't do was stand-up comedy. Right. And so I realized in that, in that exploration, in that examination, that if I wanted to go into this space that they were, if I wanted to achieve in the way that they were, which is, you know, exactly what I wanted, I needed to, I needed to add stand-up comedy to my repertoire. And it needed to not be just like, a plug and play. It needed to be authentic and I needed to be genuinely good at it. And it was something I always knew was within me, but I just kind of never had really fully pursued it. And then once I put that out into the universe, it's like it kind of just manifested where about six months later, um, I was asked to be on a stand up show because the host had thought I was already a stand up comedian. She was a fan of mine from doing talking head stuff on VH1. Right. So I, I, I just took the leap. It was like, you know, being called to the altar kind of situation. And I took the leap mm -hmm. and I did the show and it went well, thank goodness. And so <laughs> I stuck with it. And, um, and so I just, but I came up through the ranks and I didn't skip steps. I may have sped them up, but I, I didn't skip steps. You know, I took my, I, I did my, my dues in lumps. terms of mm -hmm. open mics. You know, I did Small my open little. mics mm -hmm. and I did my, my kind of, you know, struggling on these showcases and having to beg and, and barter and ask people to get on their shows and running around New York all times of night in the cold, you know, just trying to get five minutes here, yeah. having to hang mm. out, just hanging yeah. out, oh, hanging Lord. out, hoping oh, yeah. that eventually mm. they'll get on stage. You know, maybe somebody will drop out or maybe somebody will, can you know, cancel or, or maybe somebody just um, will be feeling benevolent that night and say, hey, what's this wrong? And so I just really like dug in. And, and this thing that had always been in me, just it found its home. Well, you know, the interesting thing about it is that I wanted you to say that about your, your, your journey because of the fact that this, this, I always try to be honest in the conversation when I'm talking to my guests because you're an attractive lady. And I've seen comedians or people who want to be comedians, they, or they see as a hook, okay, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a struggling actor or actress who can't get in the gig, so I'm going a, I'm to a try my hand at stand-up comedy. Yes. And, yep, yep. and, and it's so short-sighted. And that's why I wanted to, I, you know, and I, I was very honest in my attempts to get you on the show because I just saw so much, I saw a special brand of your style. That I knew it was, it was well-crafted because you're a storyteller. 
And so if you have not seen her yeah. stand-up comedy, she's a storyteller. You know, when she starts breaking down stories, you know, she she pulls you into it. Even in her book, you know, when she talks about different scenarios that we're going to get into the next break because I read your book and I want to bring out certain chapters and certain moments that I felt related to me, you know, because of the fact that it, 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 it's, it's a book that is empowering to everybody who wants to be motivated to success. That's what my takeaway mm-hmm. from the book that she has written called Small yes. Doses, Potent Truths for Everyday Use. And I've, I've, I've had to make a comparison of her to anybody in the comedic field it would be a Whoopi Goldberg. But Whoopi Goldberg was not a stand-up comic. That's that's a big difference. But she was a but she could tell a story and she would carve or craft a story that wasn't always what you expect to be funny, but it turned out to be funny. That's her skill yep. level. But she's a stand-up comic. And that gives her a step above, which means that she can turn it on, she can stand on the corner and make you laugh for as long as she feels like it. And she can make money at it. That's why I did stand-up. We'll be right back with more. My girl, she's on my show. Amanda Seals, Small Doses, Potent Truths. You can buy that for everyday use. You can buy that in the stores today. We'll be right back to hear some of the some of the little juicy parts that I pulled out of the book. Hi, this is Rashawn McDonald. You're listening to Money Making Conversations on the show. Um, she's big. She's on fire. I'm fortunate to have her on Money Making Conversations. She's on the phone. Uh, Amanda Seals. Amanda, um, we, we talked about your journey. We talked about, I believe you said 2013, when you, you made a decision to... Uh, Say, so, you know, some uh, stand-up comedy. I want to do it. I've been, people have told me I'm funny. That's how usually how you get into stand-up comedy. People say, you funny. You, need, you, you sure you don't tell jokes for a living? People, that's how you kind of get into being a stand-up comedy. You just don't suddenly wake up and just start telling jokes. People have kind of, you you know how to hold an audience. Usually you're friends. Usually you're able to make your friends just laugh because you know the little, the little trigger points of your friends. You know certain, certain character flaws they have. So you know how to push that button and make them laugh. The hard part about being a stand-up comic is that you're in a room full of strangers. And you don't know what day they had. You don't know where they came from. You don't know if they're hungry. You don't know if they're running late. You don't know if they don't want to even be there watching you on stage. And so to be a successful stand-up comic, you have to weave a story, a relatable story, and be confident at it. Because that doesn't mean every joke that you say is going to go over big. And I always tell people, when you're looking at a room... You start from the back and build to the front. Because the front of the audience you got. It's the back of the room that you got to win up first. And when yep. I, and if you win the back, and, 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 it, and it, that's even bigger when you start getting into arenas, 2,000, 3,000, 10,000. I've, I've been in front of 20,000 people. You have to go way upstairs and make sure to acknowledge those people upstairs. Because if you ignore those people, they can turn your, own home, your whole show left to right, and you can never gain control of it. When I, look at, when I looked at your special uh, on HBO, I, I saw a star storyteller. Tell us about that whole concept of how you are so confident to tell stories when you're on stage. Hmm. Um, it's interesting that you say that because I, I used to run from that in my comedy. Mm-hmm. Originally, I used to feel like it was like I was almost like a <laughs> By just telling stories. Right. And I think in hindsight, that was because it was so easy for me to tell stories that I thought maybe, like, this ain't the thing. And it took other comics to tell me, like, no, like what are you talking about? <laughs> like, right. Mm-hmm. No. Because I think sometimes, too, it's like, you know, you'll look at other, like, comedy just has so many styles, right? You have folks that are very, like, punchline comics. You right. know, they're very set up punch, set right. up punch, hit, hit, hit. Right. You know, and then even within, like, the traditional black comedy rooms, like, you're expected to have a joke every 12 seconds. Pop, Absolutely. Pop, 15 pop, seconds. Pop, every pop. 15 seconds. Pop, pop, pop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so, for me, it was like, well, dang, you know, my style is kind of, it, it's a little bit more, uh, like, I got to take you on a journey. Mm-hmm. And I need to get the audience to ride with me on that journey. And it felt like I just wasn't. It felt like I needed to do more in order to do that than I was already doing. Mm-hmm. And so it just took my fellow comics to, like, recognize in me and, like, tell me, like, no, it's not that. It's just that you need to find those punches in your story. Like, it's not that you need to not tell stories. It's just those punches are in your stories, and you do it without even thinking. So imagine when you're actually thinking about it. And so now, like, in terms of telling story, like, um, I'm the person that you can come to, like, okay, where's the funny in this story? Right. You know, and... Like, I have friends who will bring me their scripts who are not necessarily 
you know, they're funny, but they're not necessarily comedians, right. you know, and I'll be able to look at their script and be like, no, see right here, there's a joke right here. See right here, there's a joke right here. Absolutely. And I know that from me developing my confidence in being able to tell stories that are not only a longer joke that's going to land, but that have jokes within throughout the throughout the past to that punchline. I enjoy talking to you because, you you know, a lot of people understand this about stand-ups is that we're just keen observers. We just see stuff, and then we, I would tell you, mm-hmm. you bend it. The, the whole key to a really good joke is how far can you bend the reality of that joke? Yes. And when yes. you bend the reality of that joke, that's going to be response of what you're going to get back. The reason I reason see she's different from me. She's a, she's a storyteller. I was kind of like a, a kind of close to her, but I was afraid of silence. I had to get to that fifteen mm. seconds fast. Okay, you know, that's why she's that's why she can act. She she's an actress. See, and, and <laughs> when you have the mentality of an actress, you understand there's a scene, and so so she's an actress and a stand up comedian. So she has both gifts mastered. See, I couldn't act, so all I had to do was tell these jokes. Cause I was, if I could, if I could act, I probably hung hung in longer for the the telling of the stories. And so, it was a couple of quotes. That, it was one quote when I was reading your book. The book we were discussing is, and I'm interviewing Amanda Seals. Her book is Small Doses: Potent Truths for Everyday Use. That really got to me. It was. I'm gonna read the quote to you. I no longer dress based on how I want folks to see me, but how I want to see myself as art that elevates the vibrance in a room. And that. And that, and that that whole reference to you came from the person who's styling you because you didn't understand where they were coming up with these clothes and they go in your closet and they walk out with this look that you would have never figured out. And I felt that well, that's how I am. I dress for Rashawn McDonald. I don't, I don't know how you, if you compliment me, cool. But this is how I felt like walking out of the house today. Work with that. Okay, now I know what mirrors are. So I know how to look in the mirror before I leave. So I know it's not crazy. But this is how I look. And so when I read that quote, it hit so home with me because of the fact that so many people are trying to be or look like something that they really aren't or what people expect them to be. But now you, Amanda, are who you are and you're proud of it and you're confident in that step, correct? Yeah, I mean, I think so much of that is just like maturity, Mm -hmm. you know, and growth and just like time, just just taking time to explore my art, to explore myself, to explore how the two intertwine. Right. Um, and I think a lot of us don't necessarily stop to do that because we're really so ambition right. driven, and it can feel like if I'm not consistently driving towards the goal, um, that I'm like being lazy or I'm not on point or I'm not focused. And then sometimes you, but you kind of realize at a certain point, like me looking inwards is also me driving towards the goal. Right. Right. And, and I think a lot of us like continue to look outwards. And so like when it comes to style and when it came to like me just developing my style and having to really like learn how to just stand on, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to like get people to think a certain thing about me anymore. That actually does scare people, by the way. When people feel like you're not <laughs> trying to gain their favor, right? It does. It really does bother people. Like I know it really bothers people that I am so unwavering about certain things that I really don't care about their opinion. Uh, you know, and so it makes folks feel like they don't matter. And it's not to say that they don't matter. It's just to say that <laughs> their insight and their input has to be earned. You had you know? to be hard they're, to they're date, Amanda. You had to be hard to date. Well, you were... You guys, said hard to date? Yeah, guys. The guys struggle with that, with that personality that, you know, they're trying to figure you, you out. You mean because... with a smart, independent woman who knows herself and isn't looking to be led and guided? <laughs> Is that what you mean? See, I know her. I know her. I love her. I love her. I love her. I mean, if, if that's what you're referring to, I'm hard to, every, I'm hard to anybody who doesn't understand how to be secure in themselves mm-hmm. at the same time as being selfless to someone else. And that's that, that's you. And that's that's the part. That's what I see on stage. That's what I see. Come tell you something. Six years, for roughly six years, that path and this journey that you've achieved as a stand up in six years is, is is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Thank you. And I and I am I am so like appreciative that just I mean it, it in in stand up time it's a meteoric rise. Oh, absolutely. Right? Like in because stand up time is much longer. 
Like for, for what it's worth, like I am very aware and I do not take it for granted at all that I've been so blessed in stand up so quickly. I think a lot of it is because by the time I got to stand up, I had already developed my voice. I was already comfortable with the stage and with the mic. So a lot of times, like, that's a big part of your development as a stand-up, you know, just being able to be comfortable on stage, being able to know how to feel a crowd. And because of my years hosting and DJing, Mm -hmm. I already had that. Stage presence. Built in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's really key. When you walk on the stage and you're able to examine the crowd. And that's really key when you walk on the stage, not bothered by the lights that can that can uh, block and you view not nothing intimidates you. That stage presence is the key to how fast you will rise as a stand up. If you're not a gimmick act. Now, if you're a gimmick and you got some little character you're trying to pull off. No, she's going on stage being herself. When she walks on stage, I love, I like to believe the person I saw telling those jokes is the person I'm going to say hello when I walk off stage. And that, yeah. that ability to be able to do that as fast as she's done it is, is phenomenal. It's really impressive. It's a very funny book, Amanda. I, you know, I, I, I hope I can get you back on the show. I, 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 I'm running out of time. I wanted to break down very, I got so many pages folded in this book, but, you know, like, like, <laughs> I have well, long answers. So I apologize. I, I know you, so you got long answers. Really? Now that's why I can't, that's why I can't, questions. that's why I can't go into certain like white people stop doing this. Black people stop doing this. Friends need to keep the drop. You know, it's uh, uh, the story about the guy who took you to the hotel room and, you know, and, and, he, and you woke up and you knew he, y'all had, had sex and he didn't talk to you for a couple of weeks. And then you text him. Then he had an attitude. It's so many great stories in this book that I want to talk to you about. First of all, you thank- only read this book. I am so appreciative. Like, <laughs> listen. I really, really appreciate that. You really read this. Thank you. Well, I read the book because guess what? You're a talent, and I, I, it's, a, it's a book. It's funny. It, 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 it's, it's a it's, it's a book like I've never read. I've been fortunate in my life to have taken books to number one. I've been fortunate in my life to read books on a regular basis on my show, Money Making Conversation, for the last two years. This is a must read. It's a it's a colorful book. It has it has graphics in it. It's a book like its pages are pink, pages are brown. It's a book that you cannot go to a restaurant and read it. You have to read it in your house and enjoy it in the daylight. It's funny. But more importantly, you keep winning, Amanda. Thank you for taking the time to do my show. Know that Rashawn McDonald is a fan of yours. If you ever want to promote anything, come back on the show. Send me a social media post, and I will support you 100%. That's so, I just really appreciate you. And thank you again for working so hard at bringing me to the show and uh, really sticking <laughs> with it because I mean that 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 is noteworthy in itself. So thank you again, brother. And, and, and keep being that 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 soul sister that tells the truth. Okay. <laughs>